I mean to speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Well, Mandy and I were sitting here last week in the Swiss mountains and thought we'd watch Tom Hanks's fairly new film called Greyhound. I don't know whether any of you have seen it or not, but it's, it's, a, it's a really good film and great fun. But it was about the Atlantic convoys between uh, North America and Europe during, during the Second World War and the huge bravery of all of those soldiers and sailors who protected the merchant fleet as they were bringing absolutely crucial supplies uh, to the UK and to Europe. And it was violent and it was extremely challenging. And 75,000 young men uh, were killed during that whole operation. And I had a great friend staying with us here, and I felt myself so moved by it, that, that and, and strangely feeling, your kingdom come, O oh Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. A real feeling that somehow we've just got things horribly wrong. How is it that us as human beings can do this to one another? How is it that there's so much violence and conflict in the world? Why is there this permanent need to resort to war to solve differences? And you know, we see so much of it in today's world, whether it be in Ukraine or in parts of Africa or wherever it might be. And not only that, but our conversation uh, between the different groups around the world, the different groups in society, has become so violent. There seems to be no longer any place for vigorous, but also respectful debate. And the whole point about debate is that we reach common mind, that we reach a viable solution. I mean, the centers of excellence in this world, that which used to be, and still I hope are, the universities, it seems today that there can only be one view and all other views are somehow redundant, old-fashioned and indeed downright unwanted. Is that really a society that we want to live in? Is that the kind of society that we believe that we as Christians, we as human beings really want to, to um, promulgate? The whole notion of oneness, of community, of consensus, of listening to others, even though they may have completely different views to ourselves, to bringing healing to this fractured and wounded world, that is so central to our humanity and certainly central to our God-given humanity. So where is that compassion, that consensus, that desire for really cohesive community in our world today? The answer is, fortunately, that it is everywhere. There are so many wonderful gifts of compassion, so many wonderful acts of compassion uh, of trying to create caring community in our, in our world. There are so many examples, but so often it's drowned out, not just by circumstance and things going on in the world, but also by the media. But it's also drowned out by our own exclusive actions and opinions. I think the heart of our spiritual message, of our God-given message, is that we seek to live and care for one another. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind, but love your neighbor as yourself. Christ is with us. And when I look here as I sit in the mountains, the universal Christ is with us. And the psalm that I read for this morning, which is the Jubilati, is about praising God. God is everywhere, everywhere amongst us and longs for us to receive his Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, of course, does so many different things. And in fact, we can do nothing of any, of any real good without the influence of the Holy Spirit. It softens our hearts. It gives us hearts of flesh rather than of stone. 
it opens our ears. He opens our eyes that we might see Christ more clearly, love him more dearly, and follow him more nearly. I was reading uh, a couple of days ago a wonderful commentary by Nicky Gumbel from Holy Trinity Brompton, who's just retired uh, as the priest there after 30 years. He really has done the most extraordinary job for bringing faith to, to um, his community and indeed around the world. And he was talking about um, that the well-known passage from, from 1 Corinthians, St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 4 to 7. Now, those, of course, are the verses that we all know incredibly well because we hear them at so many weddings. But what he asks us to do during... Uh, reading this passage, is to substitute our name for the word love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It isn't proud. It doesn't dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love doesn't delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. He suggests that when we pray, we use those words. So, Charlie is patient. Charlie is kind. Charlie doesn't envy, doesn't boast, isn't proud. That's a real challenge. And he says every day when you pray that, stop where you feel you haven't, you haven't come up to it, you haven't come up to the standard, and you won't get very far. But you know, the wonderful thing about that is that the Holy Spirit then takes your heart, takes your whole being, and it inhabits it, it softens you, it changes you. It enables us to listen to others who may have opinions that we violently disagree with, whether that be relationally, whether it be, and, and, and particularly today, politically. We really have to listen. We have to come to common mind. We have to listen to Christ. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, to form us, to inhabit us. And then we will have a society that not only honours and loves our creator, but also honours one another, regardless of our difference uh, in whatever shape or form that may take. As we go into this holiday period, at least for our little windy rock in, in the middle of the Atlantic, as we go into this holiday period, my prayer for all of us is that we sit with that. We sit with the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to change us from brittleness to softness to cohesion. Allow the Spirit, the Spirit to flow through us and out to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.